Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Islamic Idolatries. Today, let's discuss a working definition of idolatry. Most of us have probably been, probably been raised to think of idols as objects, usually carved by human hands or by nature, perhaps images engraved upon rocks, um, sometimes trees, and, th and to think of idolatry as worship or devotion, bringing offerings such as flowers, water, alcohol, tobacco, blood, animals, uh, animals killed for a specific purpose to these objects. And we tend to think of that as idolatry. I would like to suggest that if this is the era of the Dijal, of the liar, of the deceiver, that we need to rethink and observe everything around us and within us in order to detect deception, manipulation, inauthenticity, artificiality, and to protect ourselves and our loved ones. So let's reconsider how we view everything, including idols and idolatry because there will be certain truth traps laid for humanity. This is per Iblis, the accursed. We seek refuge in Allah. Because he lays in wait. So, an idol, I would ask us to consider it as a false truth, a pseudo truth, an artificial truth, a replacement truth. And idolatry to be an unhealthy and devoted attachment to a false conceptualization or view of people, places, things, or ideas. We need to consider these things in the light of truth because truth should be our Qibla and truth is our Lord. Wise and compassionate truth most high should be our focus in all that we do. And we need to be seeking knowledge to the ends of the earth, even until the end of days. Seeking truth all around us, looking for signs of our Lord. So please consider these things because there are dangers if we falsely conceptualize people, places, things, or ideas and hold too much attachment too much reverence for that which is not true. We need to be completely committed to truth in all that we do, Muslims. This is very important, dear brothers and sisters, because there are traps all around. So consider this definition and then apply it in different areas of your life and see what happens. Because the goal is to be a slave to truth and truth alone not to any people, not to any places, not to any things, not to any objects, not to any ideas, not to any ideologies, but to truth itself. And to be devoted to truth for truth alone, for the sake of truth. This is one of the beauties of Islam that I don't see brought to light enough. And I see a lot of idolatry among the monotheists at this time in the sense that they are holding ideas and ideals up as up in unhealthy ways and devoting their energy and their time toward these false conceptualization towards these false views so consider if you notice these things in your personal life making toba is to turn away from anything that is idolatry it's to turn our back on idols and to walk away from idols and to replace anything idolatrous with that which is truth, that which is rooted in actual factual reality. So anyway, let's, let's be just with ourselves and consider things in a holistic manner, like poor and Shadith. Going around, everything that we do with the sense doors is a form of, of eating. So we eat around the edges, seeking the blessing in the middle to see things with accuracy, to see things as they really are, not as we imagine them to be, 
not as we would like them to be, not as we hope them to be, not even as we think them to be, but according to what they actually are, which means we have to dissolve our ego in our attachment. And our, our ego is, is connected, it's, it's, it's rooted in attachment, in a sense of separate individualism. And we are not separate individuals. We are deeply interconnected to one another, not merely as an Uma, but as humanity. Not merely as humanity, but as an ecosystem of life, of creation, in this world and beyond. So consider this, sit with it in silence. Sit with it in sejda. Sejda is very important because it's a place where we can not only speak to our Lord and pour out our hearts to our Lord, but receive messages from our Lord. To listen carefully to what he is, he is showing to us through signs and symbols, through thoughts, through memories, through feelings, through body sensations, through breath. Everything contains signs and symbols. Our entire world around us and within us consists of signs and symbols. So we are commanded in Islam with ikra, read. Read everything around us and within us, not just the musaf. The Musaf points us toward everything around us and within us. And that's part of its brilliance, it's a book of mirrors. But in fact, everything around you is a mirror reflecting something about yourself, about ourselves, so we can consider and see what we need to change through Toba. Because cha Toba is change. What we need to make Hijra from. We leave the world of delusion and deception and Dajjal behind and enter into the world of nature, of organic nature and, and actual factual reality right here and right now in this very present moment. Make hijra of the heart and then purify your body holistically. Purify your mind and your mental constituents holistically. Purify your energy fields. Purify your homes, your environments, your kitchen pantries, your cabinets, your refrigerators, your bathroom cabinets, your toothpaste, your soap, your body lotion. Remove anything that is deception and inorganic and synthetic and falsified, anything that will cause disharmony and disruption within the body and the mind as a unified holistic framework created to be perfect by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consider this carefully, brothers and sisters. Time is short, time is at hand. I'm calling us to Toba and Tazkiyah, to turning from all idolatry, from all idolatrous thought, word, and action toward that which is true and real, authentic, organic, and rooted in reality. So we need to return to our source. This is the only path forward, otherwise it's destruction and suffering. Suffering is hellfire. May we not enter the hellfire, but may we enter the gardens with excellence, with integrity, with dignity, dignity upright, at peace. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.